Hola, cage fighting connoisseurs. This is Kid Nate coming to you from the MMA bunker, artificially darkened to keep the spies out because I'm going to lay some truth on you about the UFC and GSP, the Battle of the Titans. Things are crazy right now in MMA. We haven't seen a conflict between the UFC, the undisputed 800-pound, 8,000-pound, 8 8-million-pound 8 gorilla of the industry and the sport. Dana White and Lorenzo Fertitta have reshaped the sport in their image and built an empire. And now things might be beginning to show cracks because their former champion, Georges St. Pierre, one of the most popular athletes in the history of the sport, one of the most credible athletes in the history of the sport, renounced his belt following his UFC 167 uh, split decision win over Johnny Hendricks in one of the toughest fights in GSP's career. That fight was followed by a press conference, an ugly press conference, in which UFC President Dana White seemingly insulted GSP multiple times, silenced him, didn't want him talking, said he was going to the hospital when he wasn't. There are rumors that the UFC tried to keep GSP out of the press conference. GSP then sort of announced the retirement at that event. Later on, they did a press conference, a, a media call, a very quickly scheduled media call, because GSP announced that he was going to be doing a public event and he would have a big announcement. Dana White said, ah, he's opening up a mall or something in Canada. Then, boom, the next day they're having a media call with GSP so that they could get his announcement that he's renouncing that he was renouncing his UFC welterweight belt rather than GSP doing it on his own. Well, now GSP has gone to the Canadian media and spoken in French and spoken some harsh words, maybe harsh truths. I'm not here to say. I don't know the facts. All I can do is, I don't know all the background facts. All I can do is tell you what the players are saying and, and maybe shed some insight on the implications of this. GSP said that one of his big frustrations and the reason, one of the reasons he, he renounced his title was that he had pushed for tougher drug testing. He pushed for VADA standard drug testing. Now, I'm not a specialist in all the VADAs and WADAs and, and HUAs and HAs of, of P testing and blood testing for drugs. I don't even think they work that well. However, GSP made a seemingly good faith effort that he paid for out of his own pocket, Chall challenged Johnny Hendricks. I think Johnny Hendricks might have even challenged him. Tell me in the comments if you remember all the back and forth of that. Regardless, the outcome was GSP did the enhanced testing. Johnny Hendricks came up with some frankly bullshit weak ass excuses not to do the testing GSP came in looking a little smaller now I've been critical about GSP and and I've been one of the people to cloud to cast dispersions that maybe he is uh, somebody who's used performance enhancing drugs in his career I'm not going to take that back he did maybe look a little bit smaller uh, after the, the testing he went through at UFC 167. Again, that is completely uninformed speculation, and I have no insight as to what, what he did and what he didn't do. But one thing I've learned in my years of covering the sport is that assume every athlete is on performance-enhancing drugs until proven innocent, and it's impossible to prove a negative. So I basically assume that everybody's doing something at some time, because the testing procedures are laughable at best, and the temptation is irresistible. I mean, if this was your career, if this was your life on the line, and you could take something that would help you recover from injuries, help you recover from exhausting yourself in training, and get back out there, they're not doing it so much to make themselves bigger and stronger as it is, although that's part of it, although they're doing it to recover from injuries so they can maintain the insane and hellish pace that's required. But anyway, GSP comes out and says this, and... He called the UFC a monopoly. These are two things the UFC does not want. These are the two potential public relations and legal nightmares that could really hurt the UFC. They have always claimed we are the most heavily drug tested uh, sport in the world. We, we run deregulation is their motto. Well, they do, and that's true, and that's laudable. However, the commissions that do the testing don't have the money to do a very effective job. It's a cat and mouse game where the cat has where, where the cat's about a five-pound kitten and the mouse is, is a 50-pound behemoth that's smarter and faster and better funded than the kitten. So the kitten doesn't have much chance, and by the kitten I mean the commissions. The athletes have the time and the money. It means everything to them. The commissions are barely struggling through, poorly funded like all government entities are these days, trying to cover it. It's, an impo it's a very difficult task, and, uh, you know, so that, and we've seen in baseball, 
the kind of sustained public relations nightmare that performance enhancing drug scandals can be. And so expect many, many more of those coming at the UFC, especially when somebody as credible as George St. Pierre is willing to come out and say the organization's not doing everything that it could uh, to, to fight uh, performance enhancing drugs in the sport. And believe you me, the UFC has enemies in the media, in the American media, that are more than willing to jump on that. In New York State, the Culinary Union has been fighting with station, the Fertitta Station Casino Empire for years, trying to stop, and their, and their gambit, their most successful weapon, has been stopping regulation of MMA, legalization of MMA in New York State. The media follows that story, the New York Times and the other media. New York City is the epicenter of the world media, and that's going to be a big factor. There's going to be reporters who don't like the UFC, who bought into the culinary union story, who don't want to see the UFC regulated and, and think that the UFC is too big for its bridges. Bridges, they're going to be coming at GSP and get him to talk. Uh, and he's a very credible spokesman. And that's the thing. This is different than in the past. Their enemies have been people like Big John McCarthy or reporters Josh Gross and Loretta Hunt that had limited credibility and limited platform. Big John has managed to fight his way back into the octagon. He's reffing again, hopefully with Keith Kaiser's resignation in Nevada. Uh, Big John will be able to go back and, and, and ref in Nevada again, but he's been reffing UFC events in California. Gross and Hunt uh, are, are still out there doing work, but they just don't have the big platforms. Uh, former champs Ken Shamrock, Frank Shamrock, uh, Pat Militech, and others have been critics, but they're just used fighters uh, without the big platform and without a great deal. I mean, some of them have more credibility than others. Ken Shamrock doesn't have a lot of credibility. Frank Shamrock and Pat Militech have some credibility, but they also have worked for the UFC's competition at every opportunity. Randy Couture has been back and forth with them, but he kind of shot himself in the foot. GSP is a much bigger deal. He's a guy who might come back to fight again, he, he won that fight with Hendricks, at least on the judges' scorecard, and that gives him a lot of credibility. When he comes back, it's going to be a big deal. Will it be for the UFC? Probably he's contractually obligated if he fights again to be back for the UFC, but he might want to take a look at those contracts, and GSP has the name brand and the money and the power to fight the UFC in a legal battle about his contract if he wants to go to Greener Pastures. Secondly, the monopoly issue. GSP said the M-word, monopoly. He said the UFC has a monopoly in the sport, and believe you me, uh, they don't. I would technically say they don't have a monopoly; they have a monopsity, which means that they have, are the biggest buyer. If you're a fighter trying to sell your services, you don't have anywhere else to go than the UFC, not at the highest levels. Now, fans have other places to go to see MMA. They've got Bellator, they've got World Series of Fighting, they've got One FC. But none of those organizations can offer anywhere near the money or the exposure that the UFC can. So for all intents and purposes, the UFC, if they don't have a complete monopsony on the sport, they have close to a monopsony on the sport. And that's a slightly different than a monopoly, but GSP said the monopoly word. That's the kind of thing that gets regulators interested. And if it becomes a full-on feeding frenzy, let's say there's a PED scandal in the sport. Let's say there's another freak injury like Anderson Silva snapping his leg, maybe even a death in the octagon, maybe on Fox TV. Let's say there's a norm that those two events trigger a big backlash against the UFC and MMA in the media, that's when the regulators might get real interested in monopoly charges. That's the kind of thing that can happen in the media. And kids, I want to tell you, I've worked 15 years in politics and public affairs, corporate public affairs and public relations at a very high level. I know what I'm talking about when I talk about the media. This is how this stuff works. This is the kind of story that has legs. This is the kind of story that could get out to bigger levels and bigger outlets. It's going to be very interesting to see how the UFC responds. So I was already interested to see, it's very noteworthy that Lorenzo Fertitta is the one who responded to GSP first, not Dana White. Fertitta came out and said he was shocked and disappointed by GSP's comments. I. I'm sure he was disappointed. I can't say he was shocked unless he was shocked at the magnitude and the and the directness of GSP's comments because that's another reason GSP has so much credibility here. This is a guy who's always been a team ball player, who's always been an organization man, who's always kept his mouth shut and stayed in his place. And he said, there's other things I could say, but I'm a public figure and I'm not going to say that. It will be very interesting to see if Dana White's let loose to come at him again and come at him hard, and GSP doesn't like that, he doesn't like that any more than Fedor did, any more than Ken Shamrock does, any more than Randy Couture does, nobody likes being at the receiving end of a Dana White tirade, and GSP's somebody who can do something about it. So those are the things to watch. Will the UFC set 
Dana White loose on GSP? Is it going to be a throwdown? Are they going to escalate? Are they going to keep Fertitta at it with his big boy pants on, his smooth uh, salesman game, and, and try to dampen things down and keep things calm? That's the smart play on their part. They do not want this fight. They want GSP to calmly go off into that night, do some publicity, do, do a documentary, whatever, take some time off, come back, have a big fight for them. They do not want an angry GSP going around on, on a crusade against them in the media. So it'll be very interesting to watch that and watch how GSP responds and watch if he does any English language interviews. If GSP suddenly starts popping up on mainstream American television shows and talk shows and he hits these issues, that will show that GSP intends to do the UFC harm in the public relations arena and that he's mounting a campaign to come after these people. And if he wants to push his documentary that's coming out, if he wants to push any sponsorships he's got, that's what he's got to do now that he doesn't have the Octagon as a platform. So if he's going to be ambitious, and there's all indications are that he is to stay in the public limelight, um, that's what he might do. And, and, and keep in mind, even though GSP, in the eyes of most viewers, including me, lost that fight to Johnny Hendricks, he won it officially, and the fans still love GSP. The, the media still knows who GSP is. He's the UFC's biggest star. If he comes at the UFC hard, it'll be trouble. Anyway, that's a quick take from the MMA Bunker. Let me know what you think. As always, subscribe to MMA Nation on YouTube. Follow me at KidNate on Twitter and, and follow my uh, writings and scrawlings at, at bloody, uh, on bloodyelbow.com. Adios MMA aficionados.